Hello and welcome to Adventure Built Gaming. My name is Ryan, and in this episode, I show you how I build these Battlefield Stackers for my gaming table. Tenth video, pretty proud i have gotten this far. These were originally supposed to be my first video, but I just felt I wasn't ready to tackle them yet, so I took my time, and now they are ready to go. Ready to show you what I've done. Let's go check it out. For this project, I'm gonna need a lot of bricks. So I'm cutting them in almost in a jig style fashion using my hot wire foam cutter from Woodland Scenics. If you don't have the time or the patience, you can go on Etsy and buy foam bricks, 1,000 bricks for about $14.29 Canadian. For me, that's not the best deal. I find that I'd rather just take the time and build it myself. And it costs almost the same amount of price to get a large sheet of foam which you can make hundreds of thousands of bricks out of. Now I'm taking my Ulfa knife and cutting them to the length of 20 mil. They're 10 mil wide and high. This is a rough uh, measurement. Some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. And you kind of want that when you're doing something like this to give you uh, variables and make it uh, not perfectly uniform. Throwing them in uh, my shaker bin to take off the hard edges. So I'm laying out and cutting the top part of uh, the stackers themselves. I already had some uh, blue XPS foam cut to the size I wanted, which is four by five inches. And this one's just gonna be the top where I'm gonna put all the details for the top tiles on. In the end, the dimensions will be five inches by six inches by two inches. Now laying out the tiles on top, and just laying out one inch grid. It's as simple as that. I do this uh, so if I want to use it in a D&D game, um, it's readily available and it'll work. Using the X-Acto blade, I score each line. So when I take my pencil and run it along, it has a line to go on and it will make it easier to work with. As I run the pencil, I usually go one way and then I'll go the other way. Make sure it's an even amount on all of them. Beveling the edges. Extra step, I just thought it would be uh, look nice with the rest of it. Now I'm adding cracks into it. So I'm drawing them in with a pencil. Give that character that lived in look. I'm doing it with the X-Acto just to score it and then I'll come back with the pencil again. In the end, this isn't really hard to do. Time consuming, but not hard. Now attaching the top piece to the bottom piece, I'm using hot glue because I had that on hand. I did it for two, and then I realized I had a Super 77 and I did that for the second two. But use what you got. It worked in the end and it held really well actually. Now it's back onto the bricks. So this was kicking around and I got them all ready to go. I pull them out, put them in a container, and there they are. A lot of bricks. This is going to need a lot. Now that I have the bricks, I'm going to apply them to the piece that I want them on. I'm using uh, Eileen's Tacky Glue but use what you want. This seemed to work best. It gave me enough drying time to work with the piece. 
but not too much that's not going to dry eventually. I, I did leave them, <laughs> I think, for 24 hours after, before I played with them again. And initially, it took about 16 minutes to put all the bricks around one piece. And it slowly got uh, less as I went along. But let's just jump to a quick time lapse. Now that it's complete, I'm going to texture the whole pieces using tinfoil ball. I've seen people use uh, rocks. I'm going to refresh the lines because as you're smushing them down, they kind of change and shift. And I'm going to widen all the cracks, change the height on the broken pieces, pick out a few choice morsels of the tiles so it looks like they've been kicked and lost. And Make it look like it's aged. As you can see, I've pulled out a brick, ripped out a bit of the styrofoam to make it crumbling, broken, who knows what hit it. Maybe a troll smashed it, aiming for an adventurer. Makes each battle stacker uh, unique in its own way. Now I'm spraying this down with a bit of rubbing alcohol, help the Mod Podge and black paint flow into the recesses a little better. It did work, it helped quite a bit actually. There might be a better solution, I just haven't found it yet. And if I do find a better solution, I'll share it here on my channel. Now that the Mod Podge is dry, we're going to move on to the base coat. And I'm doing a tan over all of them, getting in all the cracks, crevices, just 100% coverage. Now I'm going over the whole model and picking out a few bricks in dark gray. Let's give it a variation. This was the tedious part of it, is painting each of these bricks, and it took time figuring it out, making sure it didn't look like really weird when I did it. Next color was a gray, just a standard gray that I picked up. I wasn't very neat when I did them, very, not sloppy, but stone, if there's a little gradient around it, it's fine. Next color is golden brown. Really give them that contrast.
Now I'm painting a number of the bricks regal purple. If you're going to copy this, you don't have to copy this color. Do your own color scheme. I just wanted something a little different that would stand out. And it gets muted down a lot when you start dry brushing and washing everything. Now I'm going to do a checkerboard pattern. This is a deep gray. Taking my time a little bit with these ones, trying to get the lines a little more crisp. About to do one of the bricks colors. So this is a khaki color. Missed it in the brick stage, jumped the tiles. That's okay. Now I'm painting the other part of the checkerboard. This is a snow white. It is very bright. Camera mutes it a little bit, but yeah, it was really standing out, and I'm glad in the end I dry brushed and washed this color because whoa, there's no way <laughs> tile would stay that clean for long. Now I'm going to dry brush the whole thing with a fog gray. Very liberal coat. And there it is. All dry brushed, ready for the next step. Okay, now on to the wash. I'm just using a homemade wash that I made myself. And I'm coating the whole thing, just covering it top to bottom. Just squirting it on and then just spreading around with the brush then dumping off the excess and then let it dry.
there we have it. Completed Battlefield Stackers for my gaming table. Thanks for watching to the end. I really hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. Smash that like button. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love to have your subscription. And as always, I'll be seeing you on our next adventure.